In today's video, we will talk about preparing dynamic task burn down charts using Microsoft Excel. If the percentage completed of any task is updated to 100%, this chart should be updated as well. For example, let's make a couple of the tasks 100% and see what happens to our task burn down chart. Let's make this task 100%. Let's make this activity 100% as well. As you can see, the burn down chart is updated. In today's video, I am going to show you how to prepare such dynamic burn down chart using Microsoft Excel. But before we get to preparing the burn down chart, let me tell you what a burn down chart is. A burn down chart is a graphical representation of work left to do versus time. The outstanding work is often on the vertical axis while the time is shown on the horizontal axis. Burn down charts are useful for predicting when all the project work will be completed. In this video, I am going to show you how to prepare a dynamic project schedule like this. For example, if we make this 50%, as you can see, this will be automatically in progress. And besides that, it will affect the task burn down chart as well. So first of all, we will begin with preparing this table and then we will create a task burn down chart for this table. So let's get started. In order to get started with the dynamic table here, we have the activity description, we have the start date, the end date and the duration. The first thing we are going to do is, we have a list of the project team and in here we want to have a drop down list from which we can pick our resource name for each activity. To do that, we will select all these cells, then we will go to data, from here we will click data validation, from here we will select the list and we will select the source for our list. We will select the names of our team members. Then I will click OK. So now I can pick a resource for each of the activities. Next thing is the conditional formatting for our percentage completed. To apply the conditional formatting and show the data bars here, we will select all these cells and go to conditional formatting, we will click the data bars and more rules. The types for the minimum and the maximum will be numbers. The value for the minimum will be zero, for the maximum the value will be 100% or 1. The color of our bars should be this one and then I will click OK. Next thing is to change this to percentage. Now if I write down for example 50% here or 100% here, this will be done as well. The last thing for our table is the status. If our activity is 100% completed, that activity should be called completed. If it is below 100%, that activity should be called in progress. So I will write down equal sign if the value in this cell equals to 100%, then it should be called as completed. If the value is any other value than 100%, then it should be called in progress. Double quotes and close the parenthesis, press enter. Now we will apply this formula on all of these. So if we make it 100%, it will be automatically converted to completed. If it's 50%, it will be still in progress. The last thing that we are going to do to the table is to change the colors if they are completed. If they are in progress, it should have a specific color. If it's completed, it should have a different color. Again, that's done from conditional formatting. This time we will come to highlight cells rules equal to, and we will write down in here, completed, from here, we'll come to custom format and we will click this color. If it's completed, it should be shown in this color. Or if it's in progress, again, we'll go to highlight cells rules equals to and write down in progress. This time, it should be shown in a different color. From the color here, we will select this color for in progress activities. Click OK. So if this activity is completed, it will be shown in a different color and if it's in progress, it will be shown in a different color. Our total number of activities will equal to count the values of these cells. 
it will be 12. As we go further in our project, the number of activities remaining will be deducted. And each time we complete an activity, in the next cell, one activity will be deducted. So for this one, we will write down equal sign, this cell minus 1. And we will drag it up to the last activity in here. This will mean that on this date, the number of remaining activities will be 11. On this date, it will be 10. And finally, on 13th of April 2022, it will be 0, since this activity will be completed as well. So this is what we have planned. Next thing is our actual data. Because on the burn down chart, we have the planned values and we have the actual values. So for that purpose, I'll write down this formula. Equal sign, the value in this cell, I will lock both the column and the row by pressing a 4 minus count if for the range here for the activity number one the range will be only this cell for activity number two the range will be these two cells and for the activity number three the three first cells will be the range and so on our range will start from this cell which is h7 so I'll write down dollar sign h dollar sign 7 up to the cell itself. So once we drag it down, the second cell will move in the range. The criteria will be completed. This formula means that the number of completed activities up to this date will be deducted from the total number of activities. I'll press enter and then I'll drag this up to the last cell in here. As you can see in here, on this date, the number of remaining activities should have been 11, but since this activity is not completed, it's still 12. On the next date, the number of remaining activities should have been 10, while it's 11, since only one activity is completed. Now the last thing that we are going to do is to plot these values on a line chart, which will represent our burn down chart. The easiest way to do that is to select our end dates, I'll hold the control key and select these two. Then I'll go to insert, from here I'll select the line charts and I'll select the first one. I'll take this to the right here. I won't do further formatting on this chart in here, I'll just show you whether it works or not. For example, let's make this 100%. As you can see, the number of both actual and planned remaining activities in here is 11. If we go further, for example, let's make this 50% and make this 100%, this chart will be updated as well. If you enjoy our content, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel for more useful content about project management. Besides that, we post daily on our Instagram and LinkedIn pages about project management. Consider visiting those pages as well. Thank you very much for watching.